Hello there, Coach Adam with Soccer Roots. Today's video is about mental focus. Now you'll hear me talk about mental focus a lot. Um, I wanted to give you four basic ideas if you're starting out on that journey of ways that can help you as a player or a parent to help your player. Uh, so let's get into it. The first one, I want you to visualize where you're going. When I started the company, I didn't just go, here's 10 kids, here's 20 kids. I've treated every single kid that's passed through soccer routes and my car. I tell my staff to do the same. Treat them, whether they're 14 months or seven or five, whatever, treat them as if you're building a professional soccer player. Now, is everybody going to go on to be a professional soccer player? No. Is everybody's intent to be a professional soccer player? No. But my job is to not do them a disservice because if I get them to, to 12 and I've not done that, then I can't pick up the slack or the next coach can't pick up the slack. So I have to continue that journey and create them as if that's where they're going. Now, the reality then, of course, is if you leave and you come back and you've broken the, the, the development, it's just not going to happen. Again, why waste your time with lies? If you start at two and you play nonstop and then you leave for two years, the kids that never left will just be better than you. It's just the truth. Life is about committing, life is about building a skill set, and life is about effort. And the reality is, if people don't put the effort in, you don't get the results out. And it doesn't matter how amazing I am as a coach and how amazing my structure is, you have to be there every week to be part of the structure. And the first thing is visualizing where you're going. So when I meet a kid at two, I literally build them brick by brick. I start with dribbling, I add turning, I add the agility, the vestibular, the balance, you know, the failure tolerance, I'm building them, building them. So when I see people quit after 10 weeks or whatever, I think that is madness. And I feel genuinely sad for where that kid is going to go, because in reality, you've got to have a strong household. And if, if that's not happening for your son or your daughter, you really got to do better. And I just don't mean that in a patronizing or kind of belittling way. I just mean it because I love helping people and I see... 25% to probably 30, 40% of people just do not get it. They don't understand that their kid, the minute they're born, it's go time. There's none of this faffing around like, oh, you get maybe a year and a half of like the baby, the cuteness and stuff. But the minute they're like 18 months old, you gotta be cracking on now with their balance, their agility, their listening, their manners, that everything starts. Now, most people don't take it as seriously as that. And sadly, that's where the problems come in. The people who get on it, as quickly as they can, you have the best results. And the same thing happens in sport. Are you going to come at 18 months old and have tantrums each week? Yeah, probably. Are they going to finish after 10 minutes and be like, I want to go to the playground? Yeah, probably. But the people that started at 18 months old and two years old and three years old, and they push through all the tantrums and all the crying and all that, my hat's off to you because you're the ones that get the results better on the other side. Nothing sadder than a five-year-old, six-year-old, and a seven-year-old with no manners doesn't understand how to listen, doesn't respect anybody, messes around. It's just depressing to watch because the parents then look at each other and feel bad and feel sad. And I and 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 they look at each other thinking, what do we do wrong? I'm telling you right now, if you have a brand new kid, crack on with this stuff as fast as you can. Teach mental focus. So visualize where you're going. I just did four minutes of visualizing where you're going. Break it down into minuscule things. This week, we're really going to work on please and thank you. There's an example. This week, we're going to work on controlling the ball with our left foot. Whatever it is, break it down. Visualize where you're going and build your XY graph to do that so that you don't have to go, uh-oh, and panic. And that's when the results go terribly wrong. If you literally, it's a tortoise in the hair, right? Be the turtle. Build slowly. Build with a vision. Number two. Remember where you came from and why you are there, okay? If you want mental focus and you're playing in a club team or you're just starting out, why did you start soccer? Because you love it. You love the game. Are you having a bad day today? Maybe, but you're still here because you love it, okay? We always go back to where did I come from and why am I doing this? That's actually one of the biggest advantages I have in business is the fact that I love this game so much that I'm never affected by money. Whilst I look around and I obviously can't talk about other businesses, but I see them just dictated by money. And when you're dictated by money, you don't care about the players. And then when you don't care about the players, why have you got a company? That's the way I look at it, because now you're just a money machine, but you ultimately don't give a monkeys about the kids in the program. 
I want all my kids to be successful on the ball, of course, first, hopefully. And then if they do not continue with soccer into whatever, I want to make sure that they're amazing adults. So that is something I really focus on. Um, and that integrity ultimately comes from where I came from, which is a lifetime of soccer and just loving the game. Without my past, there isn't my present and there isn't my future. So never forget where you came from. The next thing, are you motivated by good or by anger? It's okay to an extent to be motivated in the moment by anger, as long as you have control of it. A brilliant example for you would be John McEnroe. He managed to have mental toughness and focus that in adversity or when he deliberately created that adversity, he could bounce off of that as an advantage to play better or to disrupt the opponent. So that's a really good thing. Um, are you motivated by good or by anger in the moment? But whatever it is that's motivating you, can we channel it correctly for our mental focus? And the final thing is what is your task within this game? Now, a lot of parents <coughs> will watch a game and they might not even know what's going on. Your coach might have said, I just want you to, to cover the right back. Don't even push forward. They're their, that's their best player. Cover them. Stop the ball getting to that player. Now, of course, your teammates will know that, but maybe the parents don't know that, whatever. You've got to stay on point mentally. And you've got to remember what your task was given to you. It might be a free roam. That's what everybody wants. The reality is, top level soccer is you've got an independent job to do. And if you don't do it, you're coming off. Simple as that. So remember what your task is. Quick recap. Number one, visualize where you are going or where you are taking your child or if you're a coach, where you're building your players to. It can be an individual or it can be a group. Visualize where you're taking them. Number two, remember where you came from and why. If you lose your humble beginnings and you lose that, you lose yourself. We've all met those people in Los Angeles that were probably cool 10 years ago. They got a little bit of success and now you can't be bothered to even listen to them because they're so far up their butts, it's embarrassing. No one's interested in that. Like, we all live in, we're all doing our own thing. Be humble, guys. There's nothing more uh, awful to meet than somebody who thinks they're all that. It's not for me, and I don't like to encourage children to be that. Stay grounded, stay humble, and you'll go a lot further than anybody who believes they are the bee's knees. The next one, motivated by good or anger. So channel it. If you're having one of those days when you feel good, channel that fun, that enjoyment into your game. Someone's put a tackle in on you, you don't like it, keep it fair, keep it within the game, but use that. Use that to build and crank up your engine. Sometimes some players need that, like I said, John McEnroe. And the last one, what is your task in the game? Don't lose focus, stay on point, and you guys are gonna go far. Thank you for watching.